Hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, the course EC 657A. The course instructor is Professor Mark Crowley. I am Benjamin Rojok, uh, the TA and presenter of the slides. This is a lecture on multidimensional scaling and isomap. First, I tell you some uh, notations on the data set. Assume that we have a training data set uh, where we have n data points. Uh, each of which is d-dimensional and we denote uh, every data point by xi uh, that we assume that the vectors are column vectors and we put the vectors uh, column wise in the matrix to put it uh, in the matrix capital X which is d by n so in uh, here we put the the matrices are column wise and uh, assume we want to find some embeddings of these training points, low dimensional embeddings denoted by yi, which are p-dimensional and, and still we have endpoints and we put them column wise in order to have a matrix p by n capital Y. Usually p is, le p is less than or equal to d and you, you usually have p much less than d because we want to find a subspace. Okay, MDS we have uh, at least uh, three different types of uh, MDS, multidimensional scaling or MDS. One of them is classical MDS, which can have, which can be classical MDS or generalized classical MDS. Another one is class uh, metric MDS, and the other one is non-metric MDS. So we have three types of MDS, and I explain all of them to you. We start from classical MDS, so multidimensional scaling. Uh, the idea is that I want so uh, there are two types of embeddings first of all I should tell you that this is unsupervised so in unsupervised uh, embedding of data points or in unsupervised dimensional reduction usually the idea is this most of the dimensional reduction methods which are unsupervised have this goal they want to the similar data points to be embedded close to each other, to be to fall close to each other in the subspace, and the dissimilar data points to far, far away from each other. And what what you know, do I mean by similar, dissimilar? Because here we don't have labels, but we can compare the data points. We can see the patterns of them, whether they are close to each other. Like for example, using Euclidean distance or something like that, any metric distance. Using any metric distance, we can see whether these two data points are close to each other or far away from each other in the input space, in the data space. If uh, they, so some, uh, some methods, some unsupervised methods say that I want the similar data points to fall close to each other and I don't care about dissimilar points or far away data points. For. When I the fit locally, when I say that the similar data points uh, fall close to each other hopefully the dissimilar points will fall far away from each other this is fitting uh, locally fitting local fitting uh, some methods say I care about dissimilar points I said uh, I say that uh, the dissimilar points I want them to be uh, far away from each other and I don't care about similar uh, points. Hopefully the similar points fall from close to each other. And some of them take care about both. They say that I want close to each other, uh, close points to be to fall close to each other and far points uh, to fall far away from each other. Uh, MDS uh, wants to do somehow both. Uh, it says that uh, although it it has some local fitting in its idea too. It says that I want uh, the data points which are close to each other to fall close to each other in the emb embedding space. However, far dissimilar points to fall far away from each other. It says that uh, rather than I want the dif differences or distances of data in the uh, input space to be similar to, to the distances of data in the embedding space. So the difference of distances should be minimized. And this is Frobenius norm, which is similar to L2 norm, but for matrices. It's the summation of uh, SQRT summation of uh, S squared elements of matrix. And it is, 
it is a squared because we want to make it convex. We minimize it. We find y in the sense that the distance, the difference between distances, should uh, should be minimized. And then uh, these we can s look at this in another way. Rather than saying that I want the differences of distances to be minimized, let's say I want the the differences of similarities to be minimized. So this is similarity the inner product. I want the similarities to be uh, like each other um, rather than distances and uh, find y in the sense that the forbidden the squared forbidden norm of uh, inner products to be similar. Uh, we are showing this in this figure. You can see that here we have a uh, high dimensional data and I want these distances or these similarities to be preserved uh, in the embedding space, although this embedding space is low dimensional. Uh, so let's simplify the objective function, which was a squared Frobenius norm of inner products. Uh, here, this is a formula, have it from me. If it x is a matrix, the squared Frobenius norm is the trace of x transpose x. Uh, trace of x transpose x is like inner product for uh, matrices. So using this formula here, we have this, and then we apply this transpose in this parenthesis, uh, and uh, you you can see that uh, x transpose x again becomes x transpose x y transpose y because y becomes y transpose y when you apply transpose uh, and then this is exactly this so it is trace of this squared uh, then uh, keep it here let's now uh, apply eigenvalue decomposition on x transpose x and also on y transpose y where v is the eigen uh, vectors of x transpose x lambda uh, lambda or uh, here sorry delta is the eigenvalues of x transpose x here q uh, is the eigenvectors of uh, y transpose y and psi is the uh, eigenvalues of y transpose y so this is the eigenvalue decomposition now let's say that uh, uh, let's continue the simplification of objective function uh, here we had this we found this above then we replace this eigenvalue decompositions here. We will have this. Now, here, I multiply. I put this term here and put this term here. They are why uh, this is equal to this because v uh, is the eigenvector matrix and the eigenvector matrix, uh, if it is not truncated, the eigenvector matrix is orth an orthogonal matrix, and if it is not truncated. V, v transpose is identity matrix. Also, V transpose V is identity matrix. So I can put identity matrices here. Doesn't matter. Then let's factor out left factor V and right factor V transpose from these two, from these two uh, parts, terms. And then I factor out this. Still, I have the squared here. And then I say. Okay, this is uh, I apply this uh, squared to each of these terms of multiplication. So I have this two here, two here, and two here. Then here, this term, according to the cyclic property of trace, I can put this term before this term. This is the cyclic property of trace. So now we have he it here. Uh, we can say that v transpose is squared v, tr v squared is v transpose v squared and v transpose as v is the matrix of eigenvectors uh, it is orth an orthogonal matrix uh, so v transpose v is identity matrix so it's, uh, it can be gone and then we'll have this it is simplified to this uh, now here let's define in this in this term let's define v transpose q as m 
which is an n by n matrix. So this term becomes equation 8. Now, so the squared for Robinus normal, the differences of uh, inner products becomes trace of this. Uh, now this minimization where the variable was y, the embeddings, uh, is changed to this minimization where the variables are m and psi, where m and psi, m and psi are related, m are, are, is related to v and q, which we have here in equation 5 and 6, and psi is the eigenvalues of y transpose y. Uh, so let's say that this call this term, this objective function, uh, is this objective function c1. Uh, then uh, we can apply this uh, squared, this, we can open this term by the first term is squared plus the second term is squared minus the first two min uh, minus two first term multiplied by second term. Then I, uh, I can trace of a plus b plus c is trace of a plus trace of b plus trace of uh, c. So I can do that. And then uh, uh, let's take derivative of c1 with respect to my because this is this equation 9 is just an unconstrained optimization problem. This is the high school optimization. When we have unconstrained optimization, we take derivative and we set it to 0. So we take derivative with respect to m, and it is an n by n matrix because m is uh, a matrix. I explained it in previous lectures, but I explained it again here uh, briefly uh, that uh, when we have derivative of a scalar with respect to a scalar, the result is a scalar. Uh, when we have why? Because the, the second scalar, when we tweak it, the first scalar changes. This is the interpretation of a scalar. Uh, when we have derivative of a scalar with respect to a vector, the result is a vector. Because each element of vector we tweak, the, that scalar it changes. The, uh, the derivative of a scalar with respect to a matrix is a matrix. Because each element of the matrix we tweak, that uh, scalar changes. The derivative of a, of a vector with respect to a vector is a matrix because each element of the second vector we tweak, uh, each ele uh, element of the first vector changes. The derivative of a vector with respect to a matrix becomes a 3 tensor or a 3D tensor. Why? Because uh, each element of the matrix we tweak, uh, each, uh, it changes each element of the uh, vector. So here it is C1 is a scalar, M is a matrix, so the result is a matrix. When we take derivative of the, uh, this term, first term is constant with respect to M, the second term derivative is this, the, third, uh, the derivative of, of the third term is this, and then we set it to zero. When this, we bring this part to the to other side of equation, and then this is once, uh, once as m psi is not zero, we can cancel these out, these are not zero. So m psi, m transpose is equal to delta. To, uh, delta. Uh, now, let's, we had two variables, optimization variables here. Now let's uh, take the derivative with respect to the other optimization variable, which is psi. Again, this is a, mat a scalar, this is a matrix, so the result is a matrix. Uh, the first term is a constant with respect to psi. The second term, there its derivative is this. The third term, is, its derivative with respect to psi is this. We set it to zero. Uh, then we put uh, bring this part to the other side of equation, and uh, one solution to this is this uh, equation eleven. So it, equation ten and eleven are equal. So we can see that. Uh, we have this, the solution of this optimization is equation 11. Again, one solution to this uh, equation 11 is that we take m as identity matrix and we take psi as uh, delta. So, uh, do remember we had in equation 7 we had m is v transpose q, v transpose q. So, v transpose according to this equation, uh, v transpose q is i, so q is equal to v because v transpose v is i, v is the eigen, uh, as an orth orthogonal matrix. We also had, uh, according to equation 6, we had y transpose y, q psi q transpose, here, we repeat it, and uh, as uh, y transpose y 
is an uh, according to the definition y transpose y is the uh, according to the definition of uh, positive semi-definite matrix y transpose y is a positive semi-definite matrix so its eigenvalues are all non-negative therefore we can uh, write psi as psi uh, uh, sqrt of psi multiplied by sqrt of a psi because each eigenvalue can be written as a sq, uh, the sqrt of eigenvalue multiplied by sqrt of uh, eigenvalue the second root of eigenvalue so uh, now we have decomposed this y transpose y into this that we if we let's take uh, comparing this with this we can uh, see that y is equal to psi uh, second root of psi uh, q transpose and psi according to equation 13 was uh, delta q uh, and q here according to equation 14 is v so if we replace it we will have equation 15 y is uh, delta uh, second second root of delta v transpose uh, so if you see now we have found the embedding uh, what we wanted to find is the embedding or y of data points uh, so using the eigenvalue decompositions of x transpose x and y transpose y equations 5 and 6 we can find y now let's go to generalized classical MDS in classical MDS do you remember we had this we minimized the difference of similarities uh, in the input space and in the subspace and, uh, the solution and was the this uh, we said that we have eigenvalue decomposition of x transpose x here we had it in equation 5 uh, so uh, and this x transpose x is a linear kernel why uh, what is kernel kernel says that uh, uh, when the method is linear multi-dimensional classical MDS is a linear method uh, because it, w it can be proven uh, that it is equivalent to PCA when we use Euclidean distance when we use Euclidean distance in classical MDS it is equivalent to PCA and PCA is a linear method because it has linear projection so uh, and but but I'm saying that uh, the method is uh, linear what if the data the pattern of data is uh, non-linear uh, there are two solutions to handle uh, nonlinear data. Either you, you should propose a nonlinear method, or we make data, we change data, transform data, to hopefully to make it linear, and when, then we apply the linear method. So kernel uh, kernel says that let's change data, let's transform data to the high dimensional space, usually called feature space or Hilbert space, and in that space, hopefully the pattern of data becomes linear, then, then we apply uh, our linear method, which is MDS here. Uh, and but, so this is the transformation of data, phi x rather than x, but we don't have phi x in kernel uh, space or in feature space, we don't have phi x mostly, sometimes we have. Uh, we don't have phi x, uh, but we, we care about the the phi x transpose phi x which is the inner product of transformed data points in other words we don't care each data point where each data point goes we care how similar or how related the data points are in the feature space uh, whether they are close to each other in the feature space or far away from each other uh, in the, and this is called kernel k uh, so if, if you compare this with this you can see that phi x is x here so this is linear kernel because phi x is x and uh, so we can say that classical MDS is applying eigenvalue decomposition on the linear kernel of data and then we had this y this embedding in generalized classical MDS or also called kernel classical MDS we have we have a, any arbitrary kernel which is valid it must be valid and how uh, we, we, we show in the next slides that uh, we can have this kind of kernel using the distance matrix assume that D is a distance matrix uh, between the data points and H is the centering matrix here uh, we can say that minus half HDH uh, is a, a kernel a valid kernel 
and uh, this d must be all this distance matrix must be also cal calculated by a valid distance metric which satisfies also triangle inequality and it has three or four properties uh, what is cent centering matrix briefly i told you that dh uh, centers uh, removes the mean of columns of d hd uh, removes the uh, uh, mean of uh, rows but hdh double columns d uh, double centers d which means that it removes the uh, mean of columns then it removes the mean of rows then it adds back the total mean because when we remove the mean of rows and the and columns we are adding the total mean twice so we should add it once back and what is the proof of this formula in the next slide here the Assume that we, we have a squared uh, Euclidean distance between x i and x j. Uh, this is a formula. Have it from me. Where x is uh, the squared L two norm is uh, x transpose x because of its quadratic feature, and uh, x is a vector here. So we use this formula here. Uh, so we will have xi minus xj transpose xi minus xj if we apply this transpose into this uh, uh, parenthesis and we uh, multiply the terms we will have this these two terms are equivalent because they are scalar one of them so we can write xj transpose xi as xi transpose xj because it's a scalar so we'll have this and these terms we can write them as gii minus 2 gij plus gjj where g is a gram matrix gram matrix this is called usually gram matrix x transpose x which is a linear matrix a linear kernel here and then uh, if we take g as the uh, if we take g as this which is g11 to g and, and the diagonal of this g matrix uh, we can write that according to what we found here di j squared is gi minus 2 gij plus gj and therefore if we write this was one of the elements of the matrix d assume that each element of d is a squared L, l2 norm of or euclidean distance of uh, points uh, then d can be written in this form uh, one is the vector of one the column vector of one then uh, let's have HDH here. Let's simplify HDH. Why? Because we, here we had HDH too. Uh, so uh, H is the cent this is the definition of centering matrix D, this, and then we uh, replace D with what we found in here. And then uh, let's uh, let's multiply this term into this parenthesis. This term, uh, we will have these terms. We still have the last term here, and as you can see, this is uh, a vector one. And when we center it, it becomes zero. So this term is cancelled. Uh, we will have these terms. Uh, then now let's apply this last term into the parenthesis. We will have this. Uh, this here we are centering uh, vector 1 again and uh, it becomes 0 so it's cancelled too so we only have this term left which is here and what is this? this is minus 2 hgh therefore hgh is uh, g. what was g the gram matrix x transpose x we replace it here is minus half hdh if data is already centered x transpose x is minus half hdh therefore x transpose x uh, was a linear kernel now let's replace the linear kernel with any arbitrary valid kernel k so k is minus half hdh therefore this formula is proved so a valid kernel can be written as minus half hdh and if we apply the eigenvalue decomposition on this previously on in mds we applied Again, let decomposition on linear kernel equation five. However, here let's apply uh, eigenvalue decomposition on the uh, 
and of any valid kernel which, which can which can be written as mi minus half hd h then we can write we can find the embedding again using uh, this formula as we had before so the only difference is that we are using uh, any valid kernel like uh, rbf kernel uh, classical mds with euclidean distance is equivalent to pca principal component analysis also generalized classical mds uh, or kernel mds kernel classical mds is equivalent to kernel pca for proof please look at our tutorial paper uh, on uh, mds uh, salmon mapping and isomap uh, now let's move on to metric mds what is metric mds another type of mds it says that uh, i want to minimize a cost function c2 where uh, I say that I want the distances, the dis rather than similarities of data points, the distances of similar uh, data, data points I want to be similar. So the difference of distances in the input space and the, in the subspace should be minimized. Uh, so the distances must be uh, kept uh, now rather than similarities. We also have in the denominator a normalization factor. Or, or without normalization factor, we don't have any denominator. Uh, the classical MDS is a linear method, uh, which we explained beforehand. It has a closed form solution. However, uh, in life, uh, whenever we uh, get something, we lose something. In math also, whenever we get something, we lose something. Uh, because uh, a lot of things in life can be explained by math. So that, that's why uh, here, we say that okay, the a metric MDS is a nonlinear method. I tell you, it's a nonlinear method. It has become nonlinear. However, uh, so it's better. It's a bit better than a linear method because it's stronger. However, when we have got uh, this reward from uh, becoming nonlinear, uh, nonlinear, we must have lost something. What have we lost? We have lost the speed of convergence uh, because. Uh, classical MDS is uh, linear. It has a closed form solution. It has, although eigenvalue decomposition is iterative itself uh, using power method or something, like, some things like that. It's algorithms. However, uh, it is found very fast. Uh, it has closed form functions. Uh, but this uh, metric MDS needs to be solved iteratively using gradient descent uh, or Newton's method. So uh, we ha we have made the method nonlinear, but we have lost its closed form solution. Now it has we should solve it iteratively. Uh, here, this uh, we solve it using uh, Newton's method. Uh, this is a quasi Newton's method, diagonal quasi Newton's method, where y i k means the v or nu is a iter iteration index, but uh, y i k means the kth dimension of y i. Uh, and then uh, we uh, we apply this. So we can either apply Newton's method or grad gradient descent uh, method. It doesn't matter. Salmon mapping is one of the famous uh, subspace learning methods. It is a special case of metric MDS. Its uh, formulation is very similar to equation 22. Uh, Non-metric MDS uh, it's very similar to metric MDS, but it has a difference. It says that uh, in non-metric MDS, rather than using a distance metric, which was, for example, dy, xi, xj, in the embedding space uh, or in the subspace, uh, we use a function which takes care of the dissimilarity, the order of dissimilarities. When, for example, we don't care about the amount of distance, we care about the order. If the distances of yi and yj is less than the distance of yk and yl the, when we apply f still this order uh, is preserved so it cares about the similarities it's not a metric anymore it cares about the similarities well, then uh, compare equation 27 with equation 22 so here we have dy here we have FDY uh, and this is a non-metric MDS S again we can solve it using either Newton's method or quasi-Newton's method or 
uh, gradient descent, where uh, eta is the learning rate. Uh, okay. As I said, uh, now let's move on. A classical MDS was a linear method. And as, as I said, generalized classical MDS transforms data, uh, uh, but still uses linear method. It says that uh, what if the, uh, the pattern of data is nonlinear? What do I do? The classical MDS is linear. It says, okay, let's uh, apply kernel in order to make it hopefully linear. Uh, make data linear and then apply the non uh, the linear method uh, on that. However, uh, another method was proposed saying that uh, what uh, okay we have kernel MDS in kernel MDS uh, why uh, why don't we uh, you w because usually people use uh, used to use uh, Euclidean distance in kernel. For example, RBF kernel uses Euclidean distance. Also, linear kernel, uh, all of these are uh, Euclidean uh, distance based. However, someone said, uh, let propose isomap saying that uh, let's um, use geodesic distances uh, for, for in order to make uh, the uh, generalized classical MDS uh, non-linear, non in order to handle non-linearity of data. Uh, here in this uh, slide, which is whose credit is for Professor Ali Gozzi, I'm, I explained to you why uh, applying a linear uh, method on nonlinear data ruins data, it ruins the embedding. For example, assume you have in a, in Figure A. Give me a second, my pen is not working. Okay. Uh, in figure A, we have a nonlinear, uh, you can see a nonlinear manifold of data. And uh, consider these points. Uh, the correct uh, unfolding uh, or the correct subspace of data is uh, figure B, where we unfold uh, this nonlinear manifold. However, if we apply a linear method like a classical MDS or PCA on uh, this figure, it becomes like C. So uh, it applies a linear method and you can see that although uh, the green uh, point and the red point are far away from each other on this manifold which are far away here to they c uh, fall on top of each other in uh, when we apply a linear method so it ruins the uh, data however if we apply a nonlinear method uh, it is correctly unfolded so that's why we uh, we either change data using uh, kernels or we propose nonlinear methods in order to handle nonlinearity. Uh, so isomap was first proposed in uh, 2000 and uh, it, uh, it's, it said that uh, it, it, it wants to handle nonlinear data. It says that rather than using uh, uh, Euclidean distance, let's use geodesic distance. And what is geodesic distance? I will tell you. Uh, consider this Swiss road in figure A. Uh, you can say that they uh, consider these two points on this Swiss row. My pen again. Okay. Uh, consider these two points. And then uh, this, this is the Euclidean distance between the two points. However, as you can see, uh, you should traverse on the alone side or on the manifold in order to reach the other point. So this is the correct point uh, distance between the two points, uh, and this is called geodesic distance. Bec it's because like you are it's similar to walking on the ground. Uh, we can approximate this geodesic distance uh, using piecewise Euclidean distances. Here you can see this approximation in Figure C better. So if we apply a k-nearest neighbor graph on data and we say that let's piecewise, let's move from this point to this point by piecewise Euclidean distances, we can approximate this geodesic distance because calculation of geodesic distance is very hard. It requires differential geometry, but you can uh, approximate that. Uh, so the sub here 
I'm explaining uh, geodesic distance better. Let's consider these three points, uh, green point, yellow point, and orange point. The Euclidean distance is this. This is wrong because we don't have any path here. Uh, this is the correct path. Uh, and uh, this is the geodesic distance. However, we can approximate it using piecewise Euclidean distances. Another example is that assume you want to go from Toronto uh, to you want to find a distance between Toronto and uh, uh, for example uh, Autumn. Uh, and uh, then you you can say that I either dig the the Earth in order to go from uh, Toronto to uh, Athens. Uh, however, uh, in, in Greece, however, it's it's impossible to do that. It's very hard. So you should walk on the ground, you know, uh, which is curvy, uh, from uh, Toronto to Athens. However, uh, still, ca its calculation is very hard. It requires differential geometry. So let's do it piecewise. Let's go from Toronto uh, to. Uh, Montreal then from Montreal for example to the uh, middle of ocean from the middle of ocean to London in UK for, uh, from London you go to for example another city in Europe and then from that city in Europe you go to uh, Athens so uh, you do it piecewise uh, and you calculate the distances also uh, as I said uh, when we find the k nearest name, in order to approximate the geodesic distance, uh, I should say that we uh, find the k nearest neighbor graph uh, as we, we are showing here. And like in this figure, we have k nearest neighbor graph, and then we find uh, so we have a, a path between every two points using piecewise paths. I mean, uh, so we have piecewise Euclidean distances. And for finding uh, the distance between this point to this point, we have a lot of paths. We have different paths, but we need to find the shortest path in order to approximate, in order to find the red path, which is the shortest path. For finding the shortest path amongst uh, all different paths, we can use uh, different algorithms like Dijkstra algorithm or fluid Warshall algorithm. Uh, we apply that on the, uh, the Kenyor's neighbor uh, distances graphs. So we have a Kenyor's neighbor graph while the uh, the elements of this Kenyor's neighbor graph are the Euclidean distances bet uh, between points, piecewise I mean. And then we apply a Dijkstra or Floyd Warshall algorithm uh, on that in order to find the distance uh, that, uh, between every two points uh, by which approximates it, the geodesic distance between every two points. We use uh, geodesic. Let's now use the geodesic distance or approximation of geodesic distance in this formula that we found before. Do you remember this formula which we had in a generalized uh, classical MDS equation 19? Now we said that in equation 19 that we can use any valid distance metric. A geodesic distance is a valid distance metric. So let's use this here. Uh, use the geodesic distance in, in this D and then we apply eigenvalue decomposition and the, uh, the embedding is as before in uh, MDS. So we can say isomap is the, the general is the special case of generalized classical MDS where uh, the geodesic distance is used in order to form the kernel. Uh, some examples uh, we show it here for example here we have a, uh, an S manifold and as you can see, when we apply MDS, it uh, finds the most variant direction. It's a classical MDS. Why? Because I told you that the classical MDS is equivalent to PCA when we when we use Euclidean distance. And as you can see, uh, this is like the embedding of PCA. It has found the most variant direction. When we apply LLE, which is another embedding method, this is found like this. Uh, I explain LLE in another lecture. Uh, is when we apply isomap, you can see that it it has correctly found uh, unfolded this uh, manifold. How by stretching this manifold, like assume that you take one hand on this side of manifold, take the other hand on this side of manifold, and then the, you stretch it. You stretch the manifold in order to make it two dimensional, and then it becomes something like this. 
so it uh, that, as you can see uh, using geodesic distances has uh, correctly unfolded the nonlinear manifold here uh, there is a sphere with some hole and uh, when we apply MDS it finds the most valid directions this is the embedding of LLE and isomap you can see that has uh, correctly unfolded uh, the sphere uh, also uh, an MNIST data set where with digits bet between 0 and 5 are used uh, we, we have applied uh, isomap and you can see that uh, this is the embedding these two are one figure but here we are showing some things which I will tell you because you can see that uh, the embeddings are meaningful why because for example 3 and 2 are uh, have uh, fall co close to each other why because they're very their patterns are very similar 2 and 3 uh, 2 with a small tweak becomes 3 or uh, for example 1 and 2 are also close to each other why because 1 and 2 are very similar in pattern here 1 and 2 uh, here for example we can see 3 and 4 are very far away from each other because they are different uh, or 1 and 4 uh, here 1 and 4 are far, uh, are close to each other why because 1 and 4 with a small tweak 1 becomes 4 uh, also in this in the right figure you can see that uh, you, we like we have something like the legs of octopus empirically uh, I have seen that uh, the embeddings of isomap is usually but not always like the legs of octopus you can see that th these are the legs of octopus as I'm showing. the legs of octopus are shown better in another figure here uh, this is also uh, the embedding of isomap on MNIST data and as you can see these are the legs of Octopus. Give me a second, my pen. These are the legs. You can see the legs of octopus here. Okay. Uh, so here we are showing uh, some uh, some useful resources to read. Uh, there is a tutorial paper on multidimensional scaling, Simon mapping, and isomap tutorial and uh, survey. This is our tutorial you can read. There is also a tutor good u tutorial YouTube uh, video by Professor Ali Kossi at University of Waterloo. There is also a book on MDS. The references. The reference one is uh, uh, the tutorial on uh, PCA because of the relation between PCA and MDS, as I said. There is reference two is. Uh, tutorial on MDS salmon mapping and isomap. Uh, three is uh, the paper, the original paper uh, for salmon mapping. Four is the or original paper for isomap. Uh, five is the uh, paper uh, on TISNI. Uh, this figure was taken from the TISNI paper. And uh, six is the uh, a book on MDS multidimensional scaling. Okay, I hope that was uh, helpful and thank you and have fun.